Laika as well. Back to the Code A Finals so far. Tasnar up 2-0. Yeah. I didn't actually expect him to, um, to you know, make such a lead so quickly. Yeah. To be honest, I think Puzzle. I thought that based on how his style of play is, he might have been the better. Like he might have done the better build orders and would have been ahead in that regard. But so far, Tasnar has just been. Showing him up with yep. just some good four gates. Doesn't look like a snack anymore to me. It looks like no. a three course meal here for Puzzle. He's down 2 <laughs> 0 already, and it has only been about 20 minutes. <laughs> but that's PvP. We yeah. are going to go into game three on Crevasse. So, I think, do you think we're going to see the same thing again, Wolf? Well, Crevasse, there's a lot of different things that can happen. So, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that before we jump into the game. <laughs> Obviously, it's a wide open ramp, but you can't make use of that until you kill the rocks. And. You can't usually kill the rocks until you have a, r a round of units to warp in. Yeah. So usually you see Forget on this map. We have seen some weird stuff. There was a PvP, I think it was Bonbons versus Soccer, where it occurred on this map and I was casting with QXC and someone did a Forge Fast Expand on this map and the opponent just avoided that and made a Warp Prism <laughs> and then just killed him with a four gate plus warp prism. <laughs> yeah. And it's very difficult to do anything but four gate on this map. But there are some things you can do. You can try to hold off a little bit longer, go for blink. And if your opponent doesn't foregate, then obviously you can get away with different things. But we'll see. The countdown is starting. All right. Game three. We'll see if Tastada can increase his lead here in the Code A Finals. Yeah. Or his puzzle. Going to bring it back. Let's find out. We're going to jump into the game right now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at the bottom left, we have Hailing from NS Hoso currently up 2-0 in this match. NS Hoso, Tessadar. Tessadar. Great foregating so far from him. Good micro, good choices. His opponent at the top right, a member of the team Zenex. He is. Genes, Really well known here in Korea. And then Tastar, he's kind of made his mark as well. Mm. He ladders a lot, like I was saying, he plays a ton of games. Everyone in the house has played against him so many times, just because he's always on ladder. So, he gets a lot of practice. And remember, Tastar is also from a team full of Protoss. He's got Sage, he's got San, he's got Bonbons, all on his team. Very, very good Protoss players that he can practice with. So, Xenex, a team that has a few other Protosses, but, you know, not as many well known Protosses, I guess you could say. Yeah, like you were saying, Tassada is known for his laddering. Sometimes players can be criticized because they only ladder, they do nothing else. But I think he's really shown us that he does have that that ability to refine his build enough. You can't really do that just purely by laddering. Like, everything he's done so far today has been extremely crisp. It's been just done really, really well, and you can't do that without a team. And NS Hoso doing very well uh, in the team league as well. So, look out for these guys. So, right off the bat, we can see that Puzzle's Cybernex core timing is just a little bit behind that of Tastar. Tastar getting it out very quickly. Um, and I think that just comes down to him actually literally making it just a little bit faster. It's not an extreme deal. It's like not like the most important thing in the world. But as you can see, his warp gate research is already being chronoed. And right now, just right now, that's when Puzzle started his warp gate research. So it's a few seconds behind, and that few seconds can really mean everything in a battle like we saw last game. Mm -hmm. It also comes down to the chrono boost, as we can see. Tacita being very efficient with it on that... Cybernetics Core. Looks like Puzzle the same as well. If we have a look, what's the time difference between these two researchers? Well, well right now it's very difficult to actually like look at both of them. It's about 10 in-game seconds. Okay. Um, so Tastar, it's about the same amount of time as it takes to warp in four stalkers, all four yeah. of them in, in total. So there's the four, ba four gates going down for Puzzle. Back in Tastar's base, you can see him doing the exact same. Both of these guys Doing those four gates, the difference though is that Tastar has made two additional probes with his, so he is going to have just a little bit of extra mining. Now here in the middle of the map is the PvP battle, as I like to call it. 
Okay, and it careful. looks like Puzzle getting the worst side of it. His Stalker has taken more damage. The Zealots just going to ignore each other. That's still, uh, Stalker's taking a lot of damage, actually. It really has. He's lost all its shields. He just doesn't have any Oh, idea. and remember, if he makes... He actually doesn't have his probe with his army. I was going to say he could make the pile inside of his opponent's base. But with that second Stalker coming out for Puzzle, he does have to back away. And, in fact, he hasn't even made a forward pile whatsoever. So it looks like he is just going to stop the attack. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure why his probe was running down to the bottom right. But of course we do see Puzzle warping. Both these guys warping all their warp gates in now. Yeah, and they're both adding their second gases. This actually happens a lot in PvP. Usually from here, both players will add a Twilight Council. You can see Puzzle adding his Twilight Council immediately here. Mm -hmm. And Tassadar may change it up and go for a Robo. Oh, and he's going to uh -oh. lose this Stalker if he's not careful. To be very careful with those stalkers. Every hit makes so much of a big difference. Mm -hmm. But there we go. There is the Twilight Council. There for Puzzle a lot earlier than Tastadar's. Tastadar, a little bit nervous, I think. Hasn't made either a Robo or a Twilight just yet. Because if those rocks go down, your opponent just waits a little bit longer than attacks. Mm. With just more units than you, you can still die. So he just wants to play it really safely. But because of this, Puzzle may end up getting ahead with that Twilight Council. And yeah. he's not researching Blink. He may actually... Well, there it goes. <laughs> so he actually might just go for Dark Templar, but... Well, Tassadar's had that probe on the Watchtower over on the right-hand side for quite a while. He's seen a lot of the reinforcements come through. we got that forward pylon down for Puzzle as well now. And it's going to be interesting. He might just sit down at the bottom of that ramp with his Stalkers and pick apart those rocks. Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to want to do... A little timing attack with Blink, and then if it, if he can't really end the game, which he probably won't be able to, he's just going to continue to pick units off and control the map as he expands. Mm -hmm. Still, no sort of tech yet from Tastar. He's got more units than Puzzle does, but that's not really going to matter once Blink finishes, because with Blink Micro, it's almost as if you have twice as many Stalkers than you really do. Yeah. Needs to be careful not to run up this ramp prematurely, though. These units are stacked perfectly for Tastar. And nice little poke there by Tassler to see exactly how many units Puzzle has. Now he's got a pretty good idea of what's going on. We do actually have a forward pylon for Tassadar as well going up. Yeah, with that probe that was on the watchtower earlier, he has made a pylon. He started his own Twilight Council. Here comes the attack from Puzzle. Remember, he does have Blink. Yeah, he's got a force field that's not really doing that much. It is increasing the concave for Tassadar here now. There we go. Blink, nice control here by Puzzle. All these zealots are going down. It's just evaporating to these Blink Stalkers. Yeah, this is now it's really dangerous. bad. I mean, those sentries really aren't going to compete in this fight. There we go. And he's going to want to blink back the weakened Stalkers. Loses a Stalker a little bit unnecessarily there. was there. the first Stalker he's lost this entire engagement, though. And we go in just and again. More bl nice Blink control by Puzzle. He's not actually blinking them back as far as they can go to keep them in the fight, but he is going to have to back off now. He needs another warp in of units. And he's just waiting for that moment where he has more units than his opponent so he can blink forward. Yeah. And look at this control, beautiful control by Puzzle, even the Zealot getting in on the fight. And Tastar forced to just walk all the way forward here, taking damage from that Zealot no, the entire way. Losing all his Stalkers here, he's only got three left. GG. GG. Puzzle brings it back, scores now 2-1. Great Blink Stalker control, great decision making getting that Twilight Council. Tastar just wasn't really sure what was going on, he opted to play a little bit more safely. But when that blink finishes, like I said, it's like your stalker count doubles, and then <laughs> things get really hairy. He also made those sentries, which really just do not participate in the battle. I mean, he dropped force fields, but when you have blink stalkers, what are force fields? Well, I don't think he expected, like, he either didn't expect or misread the situation, because those force fields would have been great if there was no blink. He would have been out of catch. Half of those stalkers killed them because the zealots were still getting in the right spot, but... Something to notice from Puzzle's control there, all those Stalkers were just on the armor. Yeah, I actually watched him select. Like, before it, before the battle even happened, he knew which Stalkers the AI would automatically target. He, yeah. like, clicked on them, then blinked them back before they even got shot. I was like, how does he know this? <laughs> it was like you could know which Stalkers the AI was going to choose because it blinked before it happened. <laughs> His Blink Stalker control was awesome. Mm -hmm. We actually saw him use great Blink Stalkers against Sheth yes. uh, on his way here in Code A. So we've seen him use Blink before. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen him do all sorts of Blink play against Terrans on the ladder as well. He just really likes his Blink, so I like his choice to go, okay, we both four-gated. I am going to go Blink Stalkers from here, and it worked out for him. Yeah, it was very interesting to me why Tastadar sent his probe down to the bottom right as well. 
Like he had it with his army and then just bugged out. Of, it might have just he, been a get out of there in case you get taken out and then he forgot about it. Yeah, it was weird because if he had built a pylon outside the ramp or even inside his opponent's main because that stalker was dying, he probably mm. could have gotten away with it and then that game would have gone very differently. But he decided to play it safe and back away. And he was like, oh, well, you know, this might not work. I want to make sure that I do this right, so I'm not going to foregate right now. And added a second gas, but then never teched up. Yeah. It was a little weird. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're loaded up. We're in the next game. The map is Crossfire. We'll be jumping into it any second. Maybe <laughs> I'll time it a little bit better than I did last time. Let's go.